Hey there, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while. I moved, I'm in a new space here. I'll maybe make a video on that in the future. But for the time being, I wanted to talk about the stack that I'm currently using to build side projects, why I'm really enjoying it, and what the purpose of making it was. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so why did I want to build this stack? I think a big part of this stack has to do with using technologies that I'm going to enjoy. I've been wanting to build full stack side projects going back to like 2018 when I took West Boss's node course and it never quite stuck. And I don't want to blame the technology. Part of it is also just my own discipline and making the time to do these things outside of work. But I think part of it was the fact that the technologies seemed complicated. It seemed like a lot to keep up with and you get into things like hosting and maintaining a database, keeping dependencies up to date and all that kind of thing. And it always just felt like a lot to do outside of having a regular nine to five development job. Of those factors, the one that started to bother me the most in recent years was the fact that whenever I tended to build a project, the dependencies were getting out of date really fast. And if I took a break for a while and came back to a project, I'd have to spend a ton of time getting the dependencies back up to date and I wouldn't even get to build anything on the project. This happened to me a lot with my personal website, peterelbaum.com. I created my personal website during the pandemic and even though it hasn't been that long, Gatsby has already gone through two major version updates and that kind of thing puts me in a weird position where I'll come back to a project, in particular my personal website, and I'll just wanna do something small, but everything's out of date. And so it puts me in a strange position where the time I would have spent building new features, I have to then spend updating dependencies, or you stick with old software. Neither of those is great options. And so when I set out to create my own template for side projects, I wanted to ensure that I had the smallest number of dependencies possible. Another thing that was important to me was choosing technology that made it easier to do my job. So first of all, few dependencies, but second of all, when I did choose a dependency, I wanted to make sure it was something that was significantly improving the developer experience. And so at the end of the day, I created a side project template that I'm really happy with. It has six regular dependencies and two dev dependencies. I've been using it to build a little side project that I'm going to deploy and send around this holiday season for sharing Christmas wish lists with my family. And I'm really excited about that. It feels great to create something and it feels even better to know that I can set this project aside for months and there's not gonna be that many breaking changes because there's just not that many dependencies that can be updated in the first place. And so all my rationale is out of the way and I wanna take you through what the technologies are that I actually chose for this side project template. All right, we're going to start off talking about the technologies going back to front. So database level all the way up to the front end. And so for the database, I've got to start talking about SQLite. Now I may end up making a whole other video on SQLite, but it's something I've been sleeping on. And when I started to think about what is the simplest possible technology I can use, I thought of the king of simple technology, and that is Peter Levels. If you're not familiar with Peter Levels, he's a well-known indie hacker. He's created websites like Nomadlist and RemoteOK.io, and he's well known for using simple technology that isn't necessarily considered the sexiest or best practice, but his websites have still managed to generate him millions of dollars of revenue a year. In particular, I knew that he used SQLite for his database. And what SQLite is at the end of the day is it's really just one file, but you can interact with this file as if it's a regular relational database like MySQL or Postgres. And so for me, I didn't want to deal with having to have a local database and a deployed database and a dev database and a prod database. I really just wanted to start out using one simple file. And if I needed to use a more sophisticated database to switch to that in the future. And so I picked SQLite and I have been honestly loving it so far. It's so nice to have a database that's really just a file that you can include in version control and you can go ahead and deploy along with the rest of your project without having to worry about having your database deployed separately somewhere else like on AWS. For me, I just push everything to GitHub and it's good to go. Next up the stack is the ORM that stands for Object Relational Mapper and that is a way of representing your database data in code. So for example, your database tables become objects in JavaScript, their columns become properties on those objects and so on and so forth. So it's basically a way of handling the interaction with your database, writing migrations, writing updates to the database, deploying those. 
and all that kind of thing. And when it came to an ORM, there was one undisputed champion, and that is Prisma. Prisma is an ORM for JavaScript, and I think you can also use it in Go, but it basically just makes all these things a lot easier. You can write updates to your schema and it'll automatically generate migrations. You can apply migrations and roll them back. And it's basically just a lot easier to deal with than a lot of other ORMs I've used. I'm most familiar with SQLize, which honestly is a huge pain. And so when I had the opportunity to pick Prisma on a project, I jumped at it. I always wanted to do that in my old jobs, but we ended up sticking with the more established technology, which was SQLize, but I've loved using Prisma and I highly recommend it. Okay, let's talk about JavaScript framework. So this is essentially a backend oriented stack. And so I'm using Express with express templates as opposed to having my backend and front end separated. As I mentioned before, I wanted this to be the most simple thing possible. And so for me, the simplest thing was not to have a whole other front end framework and have the backend and front end separated, but just to have everything running as if uh, it's a backend style framework, kind of like a Ruby on Rails where everything is server side generated. And so for me, I picked just regular Express. It's tried and true, it's simple, and it does everything that I need it to do. And then for the templates for the front end, I picked EJS. There's a number of templating frameworks that work with Express, but for me, EJS seemed to be the most common. When I took that West Boss course I mentioned, he used Pug. But for me, they're all more or less the same. And I've honestly had the hardest time just learning the EJS templating language. That's been the biggest challenge for me so far. Everything else has been really straightforward. about that. If you're interested in seeing the code for the template, I put the link to the GitHub below and feel free to check that out and, you know, fork it, make your own changes and let me know your thoughts. Thanks so much for following along. Thanks for being faithful viewers. Thanks for your patience as I moved and got set up in this new space. As I mentioned, I'll address that in the future, but for now, happy coding. Remember, stay hungry, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.